Welcome back to Trading 360. It's time for our 360 round live from the New York Stock Exchange. And let's bring in our expert panel, Dryden Pence, Chief Investment Officer at Pence Capital Management, and John Ede, President Director of Portfolio Strategies at Argus Research. I love all these picks and names that you're taking a look at as particular stocks. But I will start with you, uh, John, You've got several names on the list, right? You have defense stocks, you have a name like Lockheed Martin. Do you have a bull case scenario here happening, John? Oh, um, yes, Nicole, thanks for having me on today. And um, the industrial sector has outperformed this year um, despite what's going on with inflation and the Russian invasion. But there are some trends that are providing, I'd say, tailwinds to the group, and that's a pick up in emphasis on defense spending and also a focus on uh, unstarling some of the supply chain snags. So the aerospace and defense stocks are part of the industrial sectors and well positioned to take advantage of that first trend. And then the trucking and rails are a big part of the supply chain and have an opportunity to help improve that part of the economy as well. So I think it's a good time to be looking at the industrial sector. Yeah, I see some of your picks. I want to go through a lot of these in a moment. Dryden, um, as you're talking about, you said we might probably have a pretty uh, challenging macro environment here. You do have some names that you're going to be talking about, such as Deere and Vulcan Materials and Jacobs, but you're worried about growth shock for folks. Tell, tell us what that means. Well, what, what that means is you get to an area or a period of time when you hit a growth shock where where everyone's expecting expectations to go up or we think growth is going to go up at a particular level. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, forecasts change and then people tend to panic. You get headline panic on that. So you can get some overreaction to what are basically normal uh, adjustments in growth. And I think that's one of the big challenges that we see coming forward. So what I mean by growth shock yeah. is that as growth slows down, it doesn't go negative, but as it slows down, then people can overreact to that. And so it's better to pick sectors where or individual companies that can uh, withstand some of these macro pressures that are occurring. Yeah, and Dryden, just elaborate. You have Deere, Vulcan Materials, Jacobs Engineering as some names that you like, think should be added to a portfolio. Maybe you could feature one and tell me quickly about one of these, Dryden. Sure. Well, we, we really like, so uh, Jacobs and Vulcan, particularly Vulcan, are really related to domestic uh, production in the materials sector because, one, you know, most of this money is coming from uh, multiples of the infrastructure bill. So it's government spending. Uh, it's kind of insulated from some of this global macro confusion where we have with wars and everything else is going on. So when you look at Vulcan, just one example, is you, is their revenues are about $5 billion a year. But in, in California and Texas alone, there's $71 billion that's probably going to be spent uh, in uh, materials for infrastructure. So the suppliers yeah. Yeah. Of, of these things are going to have a really strong tailwind, we believe, for the next seven or eight years. Uh, and Vulcan's dominant in that field. So they've got a big demand signal for their product and reasonably both inflationary and global macro insulated uh, from that. So uh, we're, we're, we're happy with that. Jacobs as well. And then Deer, um, you know, Ukraine and Russia are both kind of offline a little bit in terms of agriculture production. The U.S. is the, a big uh, agriculture producer. We're going to have to get food. Population's not shrinking. Yeah. And so you have a company like Deer that helps uh, make our agricultural production stronger, they're going to have high demand, we believe, uh, for their equipment. Right. And they're a dominant player there. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff there, Dryden. John, you have some great notes in here. I know you mentioned the aerospace and defense, and we talked about Lockheed Martin. You also had Raytheon and L3 Harris in your buys list for that group. And then you go to the rails and the trucking group. I see Canadian uh, National and Union Pacific, Old Dominion, J.B. Hunt. These are some of the names you like in trucking and rails. Explain why that group too is so important here. Groups, sure, well, uh, I think Dryden has teed me up for this with his comment on the infrastructure spending and the demand for the material. So the materials are going to have to get out of the quarries and and into um, the, the construction sites. And that's going to be the rails and the trucks that are, are doing this. Uh, to his point, these are primarily domestic companies. 
uh, Canadian National is um, a, a Canada company, but uh, Union Pacific is a, a big West Coast rail firm. Uh, they both do a lot of um, grain shipments, and there's going to be an increase in domestic grain shipments given what's going on in Russia. Uh, both of these companies are very efficient. So volume has been weak for the last couple of quarters, but they're able to push through price hikes and increase their margins. So good earnings growth story. The trucking industry is a little um, more fragmented, and there's a greater opportunity to get market share. And the two stocks we like in trucking, um, one is a leader in the less than truckload segment, Old Dominion. And then J.B. Hunt is a more diversified trucking company, but it has a, a neat unit, which is kind of like Uber for trucks. So there's almost a, a high tech angle to J.B. Hunt. Both of these have clean balance sheets, records of buying back stock and increasing dividends. And, and again, they're the, the domestic companies that are going to be delivering the uh, commodities that are going to be going to, you know, building the infrastructure as part of the infrastructure building plan. Yeah, and I saw J.B. Hunt, the revenue was up 28% year over year last quarter. So certainly seeing some some growth there. And some of the rails, we were talking about how they're at 52-week highs. It's great to see you both. Thank you. Great conversation, gentlemen. I appreciate it. John and Dryden. Dryden Pence, Chief Investment Officer at Pence Capital Management. John Ead, President, Director of Portfolio Strategies at Argus Research. Thank you both. And thank you, friends, for joining me here. Live from the New York Stock Exchange for Trading 360 every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Nicole Petalides. I will see you at 2 p.m. Eastern for the watch list. So do join me then. But keep it right here because Fast Market is next.